way the story of any composer in this time, as well as the intent. Though Mahler died in 1911, Bernstein studied Mahler. When he studied Mahler, he realized that they had a lot in common. Both men were composers and conductors. Each of them was best known for his conducting skills. Interestingly, their dual roles of composer-conductor, each of them experienced an enormous inner conflict. Bernstein expressed this by saying, it's as if two different people are locked up in one body, each trying to do something entirely different. Regarding Mahler, the composer, in his role of conductor, he had to study and analyze the music he was about to conduct. Probably because of that, Mahler's critics said his head was too full of other people's music, and he was just imitating other composers whose work he conducted. Bernstein felt that Mahler's highly dysfunctional childhood made him one of the most unhappy people in history. Mahler had a great love for nature and animals, and often included them in the music. But any bright and happy melodies that he had in one room, he followed them in another moment with heart wrenching uh, music. His emotional pain always seemed to return, and that's how he brought it out. We, what also makes Mahler a rather challenging composer is the fact that Mahler constantly tinkered with his music. Even all of his symphonies, at one time or another, were constantly in a state of flux. Mahler also didn't like program notes. Fortunately, around 1895, in his concert with Weimar, he did provide program notes, minimal as they were. What survives gives us an overview of the story that Symphony No. 1 is telling. So here are the notes for me. It's one, two, and four. First movement is called Spring and No End. And it's about the earth waking up. There's a call of a cuckoo, and in the distance you hear the sound of hundred swans. Movement number two. <coughs> movement number two is called Under Full Sail. This is a peasant dance in a local club. Well, I have to tell you, what Mahler, the music that Mahler wrote for this dance was absolutely wonderful. It had this incredible, lilting melody to it that just made you want to dance. And the number four, the final movement begins with a flash of lightning representing the cry of a wounded soul. So here you have that contrast in the second and the fourth movement. And we have all the joy and the we don't. Now we come to the third movement. And it was interesting because in the third movement, in 1889, he originally called it Titian. And it was based on Mahler's favorite novel of the same name. And the characters included hunters and animals living in the woods. In his notes, he, uh, Mahler is finally telling us what the movement is all about. It's called the Hunter's Funeral March. The music represents the burial of a hunter whose funeral possession is composed of wild animals all marching to a beat. The animals include bear, foxes, bears, a wolf, cranes, partridges, and songbirds. The little spurts of cheerful music that you will hear in there tell you that the animals seem to take great joy in the occasion. We also have rabbits that are processing and holding the hunters in front of them. And all the animals are singing, accompanied by musical cats and a bohemian uh, group of bohemian musicians. That's what you'll be hearing, but there's one other thing to listen for. Remember that Mahler liked to incorporate smatterings and other people's work in his compositions? Here's where we're going to play Main Man Tone. I have asked Charlie to play a melody for you on his cello. Listen carefully and see how many of you can name the two. Charlie, please. <laughs> Hey, we got a good audience. 
some winner here. Okay. Now you know the two. Which teacher? Uh, actually, just a little the side note. We're going to encourage you to actually come to the Prince Nursery Mom about a month who didn't wake up when the bell rang in the middle of the night to call the, uh, the monks to madness. But, okay, as soon as the music starts, listen very carefully because you will recognize the melody, but it will sound much, much different than you're used to hearing it played. The entire third movement is actually a very sad, very distorted version of the round Frere Jacques. So sit back, relax, let Molly take your imagination into the woods and watch the animals in procession. 